Monster Hunter Wilds just looks outrageous. In many ways, it looks like a true like next generation evolution of the series. It's massive and more than anything, I'm gonna use a word I use a ton of my Outlaws video. It's fluid. It's very fluid. All I mean by that is there's no more like accepting a quest or a hunt and then going into a load screen, traveling to the spot from the hub and then starting the hunt for 45 minutes or 50 minutes and then moving on and moving on. Like there's none of that anymore. Instead, there is a hub for the desert world and you just accept hunts and just go out and start hunting. It, it's super, super smooth. It, there's not much, like things aren't really in chunks anymore. Um, load screens are almost entirely gone. The only time there are load screens are of course when you're loading into new zones, but it seems like that's gonna be pretty rare. I mean, you just think of it, like how often were you moving from the ancient forest or how many hours did you spend in the ancient forest before you move on to the next place and the next place and the next place, right? Like you're probably going to be spending 10, 20 hours in each before you unlock the next one. So you could presumably just play for, for a few days before hitting a load screen, right? Beyond that, there's all sorts of other like interactions that they've added. So, you know, dynamic weather systems, they've added in things like smaller monsters can sort of have turf wars with bigger monsters and stuff like that, which is super, super cool uh, to see. Let's see, are there any interesting ways the team wants to have the monsters and even humans now interact with each other in almost dynamically, almost dynamically in Monster Hunter Wilds? Yeah, thank you. Really, what we were trying to present with the monster actions is just powered up nature of the ecosystems that we've been able to express in the game. Up until now, we've only really been able to display three monsters of three types in the field, but now that's really ballooned into these packs and herds of monsters at the that you've been able to see kind of what we've been able to do in previous games with small monsters now on a much larger scale with large monsters also interacting with these huge groups of monsters. So being able to really detail and express these ecosystems in a really detailed fashion is what we've really been uh, what we've been really excited to be able to accomplish here with wilds. So for example, what you were able to see with the sandstorm and the apex monster that appeared there, that lightning based monster and how it interacts with the other monsters that only appear in certain kinds of the environment, that kind of dynamism, that kind of constantly changing environment is something that we've been really able to accomplish and we really want to push that aspect. It's kind of hemming and hawing, bouncing around, very unclear. But basically, in a map like the desert map, there will be times where a sandstorm blows in. And during the sandstorm, there's certain times or, or there's certain monsters that won't spawn in the sandstorms. Or there's certain monsters that only spawn during sandstorms or other weather systems or times of day and, and things like that. And so you have to be very, very in tune with all of it. And again, it just seems much more dynamic much much more dynamic and they even showed us there was a part where after the sandstorm blew past they show like little birds flying back into trees and setting up nests and stuff now that the storm was over and that's something previously just wouldn't really happen so there's a lot more detail that's tied into all of it other little bitty quality of life things like being able to swap weapons while out in the field um being able to pull up the mini map which kind of takes up half the screen while you're exploring that's super cool there's also now a ui element telling you if the monster you're hunting is aggroed to you so you can be like running away from it while it's chasing you without having to constantly look back at it to see if it's following you you just know with that little indicator a line coming off of the player character that oh they're, they're still aggroed. I can look for environmental stuff to shoot down or whatever else. So there's all sorts of little quality of life improvements from what I've been able to tell. And then everything else, I mean, it just seems to be Monster Hunter World cranked and then made super modern. And I am here for it. It's one of those things where like there really was not much to, to poke holes in. It's just like, yep, it looks it looks awesome one of the other things they did have is they had ai controlled companions you could call in so presumably if you're in a fight with a big monster you can call in like ai companions to fight for you and then you can fast travel back to camp while those companions keep the monster aggroed you can either get food or you can get new equipment whatever else and then you go back and fast travel back out to rejoin the hunt. So there's all sorts of little bitty things like that that are really, really interesting. And um, 
just way smoother way way smoother they say are there any other weapons move sets uh, that in monster hunter wilds that the team is really excited about and he said on the whole well to summarize what's going on with wilds is we are presenting the full lineup of 14 different weapon types and each of those different weapon types is going to have new moves new action new mechanics one of the major things that's shared among all new weapons uh, is that there were going to be moves now where in previous games you had to be stationary when the moves were executed. And now there's more positioning available to you. You can move while performing those moves uh, to allow you to better yourself towards the monster. Yeah, it's a little clunky. Furthermore, there's also weak points now. So if you open a wound on a monster, it'll show up as like a little glowing red spot like on the the elbow or something and then you can target that with precision attacks and if you target that it deals higher crit damage basically there's just many many little bitty things it's not going to be like i know there were rumors that it was going to be fully open world meaning that like you know you travel far enough to the north and you'll hit the snowy map and then you travel to the west and you'll hit the ocean map it doesn't work like that as far as i can tell it still has areas that you load into separately but those areas are bigger way more detailed and there's you know no friction between it it's it's very fluid as you explore different missions and hunts in that particular ecosystem other little quality of life improvements there's a 3d like a 3d mini map thing you can pull up now way better than the multi-layer one they had before you can actually move it around and figure out where you need to go it's way way better was it a live demo yes it was a live demo running off of a pc we could see like down or over rather on the table where one of the designers was actually playing the game live and it, to be fair like it was a very scripted demo like it was clear that this was something they had orchestrated very precisely many many times there's a part where like he would turn the camera to look over here nothing's happening nothing's happening oh and look the this dynamic randomly generated storm is blowing in so like there were things like that where you could tell they were they had set things up in a certain way that doesn't mean that that's all not in the game it just means for the sake of demonstration they needed to set it up that way so that it could you know they could hit each story beat each and every time or demo beat whatever you want to call it did i say the new lightning dragon thing yeah so they at one point the big i forgot what the name is um i have my notes here but at one point some of the big monsters come in and start fighting each other it's just really again fluid yeah they were hunting an alpha doshaguma they showed other things like the villages you go into have much more thought put into them so at one point they went into a village where they were breeding a certain type of mini like beast or monster or whatever and they produce milk and so the whole village's purpose was to take that milk and turn it into cheese, cheese which you could purchase and then use in crafting or healing, whatever else. Um, so it seems like they've put a lot more thought into some of those little camps and stuff you'll find in the world, which was pretty cool. Uh, beyond that, yeah, they, they hinted at making sure you understand the broader ecosystem and you can use it to your advantage. So, for example, they said there are certain signs. They didn't tell us what they were, but there were certain signs in the environment where you'd be able to tell like, oh, there is like a sand pit or like, you know, quicksand basically over here. And I can tell that because there's a monster that's burrowed underneath it. And I just have to be able to recognize the signs and then lead a bigger monster, such as this Alpha. Alpha, what did I say his name was? I'm blanking on his name now. Alpha Doshaguma. You could lead him into that sand pit and then all of his like little bodyguard monsters fall in and, and get suffocated and die. And so then you don't have to clear them out. So it seems like they're really trying to push for you to become an expert in each ecosystem as you play through it, which I think will make sense. And I think will work well from what I was able to tell. Do you think someone who has never played Monster Hunter would be able to get into this game? Oh yeah, uh, but I'd like, I would encourage you, like this is one of those games from what I've seen, it seems like it will be very hard to go back after playing this. Everything else will feel really behind the curve. So like, for example, if, if you play, maybe, maybe you point at like Spider-Man two or no, the better example is like, uh, tears of the kingdom. You play tears of the kingdom on the switch, you play that, but then you try to go back and play breath of the wild. And it feels like half of your, your abilities have been taken away. The world is way less interesting. It's way smaller. 
it just feels worse in almost every way. I would encourage you, if this seems interesting, go play World now in the lead up to the next game. Go play that, get a feeling for it, and then come and play this later. Yeah, Red Dead is the same. Yeah, if you get Red Dead 2 and you try to go back, you're like, I get that it's older, but it just feels worse because it frankly is. You'd hope so. They spent all these years making it better. It should feel worse than the new thing, but I would encourage you to like enjoy world while you can <laughs> because once you play this, it might become a little more difficult. You know? Yeah, you can set up camps outside of the main base while you're out in the world. You just kind of like deploy it and then a crew of palicos come and and like set it up and build it for you. It's really cute. But it seems like, you know how in world you kind of like you discover the site and you set it up. You're like, you're like, OK, we'll set up camp here. And then it takes time or a mission or whatever. I don't remember how long it is, but it takes a while in this. Like they actually build it in front of you and then you have another camp, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And it, it all together, it seemed like they were focused on trying to make sure that they utilized all of these different things all at once. So I fully expect some of the new monster hunts and stuff will be built to specifically benefit from having a ranged weapon and a melee weapon having um you know some more variability i don't think they're going to be focused on like hyper specialization for one weapon i got the vibe that they were going to try to encourage you to use two weapons at the same time kind of swapping between them as the fight went on which some people might love some people might hate uh crouton thank you for the 10 been listening to your streams for a bit I want to say thanks you helped me manage expectations and hype with upcoming games and as a result my gaming experience recently has been more positive i'm glad to hear it my friend thank you thank you for the 10 very generous and yeah kino man's gas for whether the the demo ran well everything we saw ran really well it was from what i could tell like full 4k it was on like a 10 foot wide screen so it was massive but it seemed to run really well it like no hitching no problems no real issues at all and that was not true of all of them i will talk in a, a few minutes about probably the weakest demo we saw all week i think you guys already know what it is but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later not all the demos we saw were very impressive what's your main weapon in monster hunter i usually go great sword honestly but i mean i, I swap around i've used dual blades i i really shake it up i was gonna try insect glaive but i, I don't know i'm not very good with it he took my thing